Today, we're going to look at two characters in the Double Dragon franchise that I've always liked. The first one is the Double Illusion character that appeared in some versions of Double Dragon 2. They are evil clones of Billy and Jimmy Lee. The origin of these enemies is unknown. In the arcade version, they serve as the final boss. Two of them would appear if both players are active in this area. But if you enter this area alone, you will only fight one evil clone. You can enter this area with two players to spawn two bosses, and then you can fight them alone if you want. We don't know where they came from, but one could assume that they are not from this world, as they possess dark powers not seen from other enemies. Some speculation has led us to think the double illusions could be born from the shadows of Billy and Jimmy, or they might be their actual shadows that were created by some type of dark magic. Not only do they look like our heroes, they also possess the same fighting styles. They have mastered the fighting style of the Lee brothers to where they can perform the most powerful attacks with ease. Along with more powerful attacks that are unique to double illusions, these enemies can create balls of dark energy that are hurled towards a target, good as a ranged attack. But their most powerful attack is when they teleport around the stage with clones behind them. Once they teleport back, if the opponent is nearby and on the ground, their dark powers allow them to enter the bodies of their opponents and attack them from within. This ability will cause the opponent to freeze in place while taking massive damage and unable to fight back, then being knocked down. The only way to avoid this is by jumping repeatedly. The NES version of the game still included these bosses. Two players would fight two of them at the same time, and if you entered this area alone, you would only fight one of them. They would spawn differently in this game. Instead of forming from a shadow on the ground like in the arcade version, they would just materialize from the air. When they performed the body possession attack, the same animation would play. They would dematerialize and disappear from view. Seconds later, they would materialize onto the player if they were not jumping. The player's body is frozen in place and takes damage, then falls over, only for the double illusion to materialize somewhere else. Their projectile was given some tracking properties, making it more effective. Even if you try to move up and down, you can see the projectile still tries to find your current location by going up or down. The best method to avoiding it is to simply jump over it, just like in the arcade version, they can perform the powerful uppercut attack with ease, but they don't seem to do the hurricane kick in this version of the game. Double illusions will always walk backwards while facing you, giving them more advantage over you. If they still have plenty of health remaining, all grab attempts will be broken by the double illusions. Only when they are near death can they be grabbed without retaliation. The story in the arcade version was very limited, offering no real explanation of what their motives were or where they came from. We did not know if they were the real leaders of this group or if they were summoned minions by some higher power. Not much was known about them in the arcade version, and many theories were thrown around. If you look at the manual for the game that was released on the ZX Spectrum, it has a decent amount of story that explains a few more details. It also mentions something about the double illusions at the very end. There's also a part where it explains how Willy came back from the dead. But this story is kind of a different scenario. But for this version of the game, it has its own little connection to the first game. So here's how it goes. After Double Dragon 1, Willy and all the black warriors were killed. At least, we thought. But one member did survive. The solitary surviving member of the gang nursed herself back to health and spent several years studying ancient oriental arts of healing. At the far fringes of the ancient medical science she studied, there is an area of what can only be called magic. Magic powerful enough to reincarnate the dead, Linda, for it was she, perfected her powers of undai or magic medicine to the point where she had the ability to raise the mortal remains of the dead. She learned how to breathe life back into the human remains left behind by souls long departed from this planet. No prizes for guessing what Linda's main aim was, 
But first, she practiced her powers on the remains of a few dead Yobos, lowly members of the Black Warriors gang, to make sure she had full mastery of the magic before concentrating on raising Willie himself. Before the brothers Lee realized what was happening, the Black Warriors were up to full strength once more and back in action, and it seems Linda's early experiments produced one or two mutated gang members, driven by a powerful urge for revenge. Sharpened by five years being dead, Willie ordered his minions to kidnap Marion once more. Within days of his command being issued, the hapless girl found herself transported to Willie's secret base. Never a thug to make the same mistake twice, Willie immediately murdered Marion and locked her remains in a magic field conjured up by Linda, who achieved remarkably rapid promotion within the hierarchy of the Black Warriors as a result of her success in getting Willie up and about. Once again, the twins set out on a quest to rescue Marion, but this time their mission is likely to be even more complicated. Starting out in the city's heliport, Billy and Jimmy have to battle their way down a lift shaft, into and through a warehouse, and out into the open countryside. Fighting their way up a cliff, they reach a hilltop where a door to Willie's secret base is hidden. Marion's body lies entombed in the center of this hideout, and to stand any chance of rescuing her and returning her soul to this world, the heroes will have to kill Willie and then do battle with their own tortured souls. Only when the warriors and Willie have been defeated can the magic field that shields Marion's remains be penetrated. The Lees are twins, but they are also the seventh sons of a seventh son, so they have magical powers bestowed on them as their Shinto birthright. When they have defeated their own souls in combat, they will draw sufficient power from the ether to enact a Shinto resurrection ceremony and restore Marion to life. With the warriors finally eradicated and Marion restored to the peak of health, Billy, Jimmy and Marion will pass through a portal into another space-time continuum and hopefully live a long and peaceful life together. Linda from the first game is the one who survived the attack from the Lee brothers and then practiced this type of healing magic. The section where it says that Linda produced one or two mutated gang members could be referring to the double illusions, considering how the gang was resurrected through magic, and maybe something else happened during this process, but there's no clear link to them in the story, so these mutated gang members might have been enemies we never fought, or something that was not so easily distinguished as mutated. I mean, look at the graphics. Anyways, let's move on. This name of the tortured souls could be talking about the pain Billy and Jimmy went through when they found out that Marion was killed. They probably endured an incredible amount of sorrow after Marion's death. The double illusions could be the physical manifestation of their tortured souls. Billy and Jimmy were also said to have magical powers from their birthright. One ability they had was to resurrect someone through a special ceremony. The Double Illusion boss also appeared in the PC DOS version of the game, and the Sega Genesis Mega Drive, which was a port of the arcade version. In the arcade and Sega Genesis Mega Drive version of the game, when the player encounters the Double Illusion, the screen would pause, and the enemies would appear from shadows on the ground. The DOS version does not pause the game, and the illusion just comes out of the floor. In the PC Engine version, they would just walk out from the door. It's nothing that exciting. On the NES version, the double illusions would just materialize through the air. It's a very different introduction, unlike the arcade and Mega Drive version, which appear to be more menacing. The PC Engine version of the game did give the boss a different animation right before they enter the player's body to damage them. You would also only fight one double illusion in this game, even if you're in a two-player mode. Some versions of the game would also give them the ability to move around this stage with clones behind them, kind of like a teleport. On the PC Engine version of the game, this just served as a teleport for fast movement around the stage, but on the arcade and Genesis version, they would use this move once, then a second time that would move closer to your location. If you're close on the ground, it connects into the body possession attack. 
Double Illusion bosses had all the powerful abilities of Billy and Jimmy, along with other dark powers. Battling two of them at once was an even greater challenge. It was a way of putting all your skills to the test against an opponent that not only copied your fighting style, but also had more advantages over you. This boss was so iconic that they made more appearances in other games in different ways. They would appear in the 2013 game Double Dragon 2 Wander of the Dragons, and again using a similar fighting style as your player. In Double Dragon Advance, two characters borrow a similar attack from the Double Illusion bosses of the past. Raymond and Yang are able to enter their own shadows, then enter the opponent's body to damage them. It's more of a variant of the body possession that the Double Illusions performed in other games. In the Double Dragon arcade fighting game, the boss named Koga Shuko has a super move that is similar to the Double Illusion. He goes into his own shadow, travels across the floor. If it makes contact with the opponent who is not blocking, the shadow does various attacks for big damage. The end animation shows Koga Shuko emerging from his shadow. The name of this move is said to be called Kirin which some sources have said it means shadow attack, which does make sense considering Kogashuko goes into his own shadow for the attack. A similar character was seen in the game River City Girls 2, but instead of being called a double illusion, he went by the name of Shadow Billy, which is most likely the same character but just given a more suitable name. Shadow Billy is seen within the Shadow Realm shop. Out of all the bosses in Double Dragon games, this one has to be one of my favorites. Sure, it's just a clone of Billy and Jimmy, but they were given extra powers. They could also pull off some powerful attacks much easier than the Lee brothers could do. I just have a big interest in clone characters that have different moves. Which brings us to our next topic of the mysterious warrior boss in some versions of Double Dragon 2 who is also my other favorite character in this franchise. Now he appears as a final boss of the NES or Famicom version and also the PC Engine CD version of the game. He would replace Willy in the final battle. On the NES version of the game, you would find Marion, or at least it appears to look like her. As you approach her, she fades away. Then the mysterious warrior appears before you and says, this is the end of the line, Double Dragons. You are no match for me or my illusions. Let's go. When he mentions illusions, it leaves us wondering if he summoned the double illusion clones in the previous battle, or if they are enemies designed just to challenge you against your own fighting style. It's never mentioned if he was linked to that boss in any way, so it leaves us with some theories. The PC Engine CD version of the game has a scene where Marion appears, but she warns him of the incoming danger they are about to face. Then she fades away. This could have been an illusion projected by the final boss as a way of taunting them to not proceed any further. Since Marion was already deceased in the story, it's hard to say if this was even a magical image that was sent by her. There's a few other differences between the two versions. On the NES version, the first phase of the battle takes place on a green area surrounded by purple flames, with a night sky filled with stars, a statue, and a pair of eyes watching you. But the PC Engine version differs a lot here. The bottom area shows a glass floor looking out into space, with stars and planets in the distance. And the upper area could be a formation of clouds or something. It's hard to say what that is. This boss would use his own fighting style, but his powers included changing the area you fight on and the ability to turn invisible, which he shares in both versions of the game. After this enemy has taken enough damage, the stage will shift to another area, or possibly the previous one was just an illusion maybe. The new area is within a temple, and both versions of the game share similar images in the background, like giant pillars, candles, windows, and an image of a being's head. During the NES ending, the mysterious warrior says this, It appears our battle is finally over, but I will leave you with the legend of the shadow. If the illusion spreads, the evil will live again. But if two dragons soar through the sky, an angel will fall to the earth. Soon I will die, and you will join me. Farewell, double dragons. Ha ha ha. Billy and Jimmy had no clue what the mysterious warrior meant with those words, but they felt their revenge was complete, at least for now, and that night, 
an angel descended from the heavens and returned Marion to the double dragons, alive and well. You could say his last words were written in a way to make him sound more honorable or noble, unlike other villains which are pure evil. On the PC Engine CD version of the game, there are different endings based on the difficulty you played on. Easy difficulty would show the mysterious warrior escape as a taunts you. Medium difficulty would have him defeated but Marion is still dead. Hard difficulty would show the best ending. After his last words, the mysterious warrior goes through an animated death sequence where his flesh melts away and only his bones are left behind. Then Marion is brought back to life in the final sequence. In Double Dragon 3 on the Famicom, the manual had images sorted like a comic book. It went into the story a bit. At the start of the story, you would find a friend of the Lee brothers. He was attacked but then dies shortly after, and the letters behind him on the wall read out Black Warriors. In the American version of the manual for Double Dragon 3 on NES, they mention the events of Double Dragon 2 very briefly. The group you faced here was the Black Shadow Warriors, and the mysterious warrior you fought here went by another name of the Supreme Black Shadow Sensei. The TV series had a character named the Shadow Master, who was also seen in the fighting game on the Super Nintendo. He is the half-brother of Marika Lee, the mother of Billy and Jimmy, which makes him their uncle. He is a different character and has no relation to the mysterious warrior in Double Dragon 2. Double Dragon on the Game Boy Advance had a group of enemies called the Five Emperors. Some sources say that their design was inspired by the mysterious warrior from Double Dragon 2. The mysterious warrior would appear again in the 2017 game Double Dragon 4 as an unlockable character by defeating Floor 40 in Tower Mode. He is one of the best characters in the game, having rapid punches, a high damaging leg attack, a push attack to knock enemies off ledges, the spinning fist attack on the floor or in the air, and he was also given a fireball similar to Sunny Lee. As strong as he was in this game, he still had a few weaknesses. For example, his standing kick normal attack had short range and was slower, so the punches were preferably better in every way. His kick finisher in a combo would tend to miss at close range, so you had to adjust the range from the enemy so the kick finisher would hit them. Alright, so that covers as much information I could gather about the Double Illusions and the Mysterious Warrior from Double Dragon 2. This was a really fun project to work on, as I've always liked these two characters. If there's anything I missed, please put it down in the comments section. But I would like to know, who are your favorite characters in the Double Dragon video games? Put your answer down below. This is Carlos or Acid Glow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.